Hello everybody, I'm Davide Palessi and today I'll show you a presentation about the need of preserving the order of data when validating within project event classifiers. This work has been published in the Empirical Software Engineering Journal in 2020 and it has been uh, developed by me, my three undergraduate students at my former university, the, Cal the California Polytechnic State University, and my colleague uh, Burak Turan. This is the agenda for today. I will first present the context, then the aim and contribution of the study, the related work, the study design, the results, and then I will finish with some conclusions. So we are in the shoes of a practitioner who uses previous project releases data to predict which classes of the current release are defect prone. In this scenario, the practitioner would like to use the most accurate classifier among the many available ones. A validation technique, also called a technique, defines how to measure the prediction accuracy of a classifier. So a technique specifies how a dataset is used to build a training set and a testing set. The aim and contribution of this study is to answer two research questions. The first one is do classifiers vary in accuracy? And the second research question is do techniques vary in accuracy? So the first research question we try to understand uh, if the accuracy of the classifiers vary across classifier. And so if it varies, then it's important to use a technique that allows us to choose the accurate classifier. Whereas in the second technique, we try to understand uh, if the techniques are different or are really the same. And so if it is important to choose a technique, which in turn help us choosing a classifier. Due to time constraint, I will focus this presentation only on research question two. But if you have time, I will strongly suggest you read the entire paper, which is open access and so available. So regarding related work, we took inspiration from a previous study that is reported at the bottom. And uh, we have the same aim. So we try to understand uh, uh, which technique is better. But we focus uh, uh, on a context that is across releases whereas they focus on a context that is within release. So we try to use all previous release data to predict the present one, whereas they focus to maximize the data within the same release. And also we made different design decisions. Of course, results are different. First of all, let's present uh, the different types of validation techniques. The difference between time series technique and non-time series technique is in the fact that time series techniques preserve the order of data between the training set and the testing set. In other words, time series techniques avoid that future data is used to predict past data. So you might avoid using release three data to predict release two data. So these are uh, three examples of uh, validation techniques. The first validation technique is called work forward, is uh, a non-time series technique. It has been largely used for validating models that predict stock prices. And in this technique, the data set is divided into parts. A part is the smallest unit that can be ordered. So for instance, in our case, a part is a release of a project. Then the parts are chronologically ordered and in each run, all data available before the part to predict is used as the training set. And the part to predict is used as testing set. So in this case, this is used as a training set and this is used as testing set. In this case, these two releases are used as a training set, and this release is used as a testing set. Afterward, the model accuracy is computed as the average among all runs. The five-fold uh, cross-validation is uh, one of the most used non-time series technique, eh? and it makes use of random sampling strategy to construct several training and test set on which the accuracy of the model is averaged. The model accuracy is the average among runs, and the number of runs is equal to the number of folds. So this is equal to the part in which the data is divided. So in this case, we have five parts and we have five runs. The bootstrap method, at the contrary, uh, consists of creating the training set by randomly sampling data with replacement and using the original set as the test set. A variant is called out of sample bootstrap, where the model, instead of being tested on the original dataset, is tested on the data of the original dataset that is not used in the training set. So for instance, in this example, the training set is composed by parts one and three, and the testing set is consists of parts 
two, four, and five. In second run, the training set is part two and three, and the testing set is part one, four, and five, and so on. And at the end, you average the result. So in this study design, we use nine classifiers, and we try to predict if a class in a release is buggy or not. We use two industry and 13 open source projects. As independent variable, we use the three techniques that I just showed you previously, the tenfold cross-validation, the bootstrap, and the work forward. And we also use a three ideal technique, the best, the roast, and the medium. And this act as a baseline to understand whether those previous techniques are excellent or they're pretty good or they are pretty bad. As dependent variable, so in order to understand uh, uh, if a technique is accurate or not, we use three metrics. The first is the recommended classifier AUC. So in other words, a technique is accurate if it suggests the use of an accurate classifier. Then we use bias, which is the estimated AUC of a classifier minus the actual AUC of that classifier. And this somehow is helpful to understand the, the type of bias, whether the technique overestimate or underestimate the classifier's accuracy. And then we use absolute bias which is similar to bias, but it is useful to understand the extent of the bias. So this is the result, and we can see that work forward has the highest AUC, so it is uh, uh, able to recommend the classifiers with the highest AUC when compared to out of sample and 10 times 10 fold cross validation. We can also see that this worse than the best technique, but it's also better than a median technique. So it is pretty good. There is uh, room for improvement, but uh, it is pretty good. Regarding bias and absolute bias, we can see that word forward has a smallest distribution, so it is pretty stable and is also uh, and also provide a lower bias. Regarding absolute bias, we can see again that word forward provides the lowest absolute bias. It is interesting to see that all the three techniques merely overestimate the classifier's accuracy. Then we provide a statistical test where we compare different techniques, and it seems that uh, the word forward technique is statistically significant in terms of AUC bias and absolute bias, both versus 10 times 10 fold cross validation and versus all of them. Uh, one of the reasons why the work forward might have outperformed the other techniques is that the other techniques took advantage of time and the knowledge that that time provided. So what we have done is that uh, we divided the, the data set in the first half and the second half and we check it on whether there was a difference in the proportion of buggy glasses between the first half and the second half. And the results show that there is a big difference on all the 15 projects that we have analyzed. So for instance, in Ant, the real difference is 52%. So we have that the defective rate in the first half is 50%, whereas in the second half is 23%. Our conclusion is that uh, we suggest using time series techniques because they are more accurate, simpler, faster, and more stable than non-time series technique. However, there is no silver bullet in software engineering. This means that as different types of techniques measure different types of accuracy, no technique can be claimed better or worse than another overall. Our suggestion, therefore, is to choose the technique by carefully considering the classifier user scenario, the type of research question, the conclusions to draw, and when possible, validating the technique and period. Thank you very much for your time, and if you have questions, please read the entire paper and send me an email. Okay, hello. Uh, welcome to the first uh, live Q&A session uh, for the paper by Davide Falesi of this session. Uh, the session's name is Defect Prediction, Modeling and Performance. So um, the paper is on the need of preserving order of data when validating within project defect classifiers. So uh, Davide Falesi is here to answer your questions. Um, first, let me congratulate you on this great work, Davide. And uh, I will start with the first question by Hank Lee. Um, he says, I may have missed it. What is the oracle when calculating the bias of the different validation approaches? Yes, so first of all, the, the data sets we use it uh, were already used uh, in the community. Um, so uh, they, um, we didn't compute the metrics ourselves, but we use it uh, 
data sets that were uh, already there. Uh, regarding the specific question, uh, mm -hmm. I have to admit that I don't perfectly remember. Uh, so I'm going now to the paper to get. Uh, uh, yeah, I think the, the, the bias, if he means uh, it's the, the difference between the estimated area under curve and the actual area under curve, the difference. Yes, but the problem is uh, what is the actual accuracy? I think this is the question. Uh, so I think what I've done is that. Uh, uh, okay, he also, he also mentioned that his question is actually the same as Leandro's. So maybe we can also read Leandro's question. Yes. Uh, so he says, I'm not sure if I understood how you get the ground truth to know which technique is more accurate than the others. I think this is a very good question. So, I mean, I don't know, of course, it's your paper, but uh, you have some measure called actual uh, area under curve. So it's I good. assume that was based on a, a, another classifier, which you also refer like you did several, um, you applied several classifiers and then you took uh, the best classifier, the medium classifier. So I was thinking, and that was also my note, maybe the actual area under curve comes from that, uh, the, 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 one of the classifiers, best classifiers value, but um no i think in that case uh, the best the worst and the median are the ones that will choose uh, the best the worst and the median uh, classifier so what happens is that there is a scenario in which i say you know uh validation technique is a good technique if you choose the best technique if you choose the best classifier sorry okay, okay. so in this case and it's a median technique if we choose the median classifier and it's the ro a rose technique if we choose the rose classifier Okay, so that uh, by doing this, uh, we can compare the actual accuracy of actual validation techniques towards somehow ideal techniques. I think that uh, this is explained uh, uh, in uh, two, 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 two. Uh, Okay, so what happens is that uh, uh, now I know the answer. So sorry about, uh, sorry Leandro and sorry Hank for uh, waiting for the answer. So first of all, we hold out uh, a release of data. So the last release of data at the end. And so we use it somehow that as a validation test. So the actual accuracy of a classifier is the classifier that used the previous release of data as training set and the last release of data as testing set which is a realistic scenario. Yeah, so if it is uh, not the answer you were expecting, please <laughs> elaborate more on your questions, um, Hank and Leandro. And while we are waiting, I also would like to ask a question. Um, so you uh, picked one kind of, um, let's say time sensitive approach, which preserves the order. And mm -hmm. it is it is a common one. Uh, so you use, as you said, the last release to do the prediction, mm -hmm. and then the, all the previous releases uh, to 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 train the model, right? Yes, this to compute the actual accuracy, not yes. that validation technique. Yes. Yeah, and um, so when we are uh, training the model by while preserving the, uh, let me rephrase: when you are training the model by considering the time, you can also use other approaches, like for example, using the last release to train, sorry, the one before the last to train and then predict uh, the last, or all of the previous versus the last, or in some studies like they are putting, for example, uh, three months ch chunks of data mm -hmm. and then yeah. doing something like sliding window. So do you, have you, 
Have you looked into those in this study or did you plan or do you plan yes. to? Yes, so this is a good question, I say, while uh, Heng Li revised the, that question, but we can yeah. go back to your question. So let me first ask your question. Your question is very good. So the question is that there are other time uh, series techniques and why have you worked for it? I think the point that I wanted to make in the paper is that the validation technique must realistically uh, somehow uh, represent the user scenario of the classifier. So if uh, you envision the user to use uh, always the previous releases of data to predict the next one, and then again and again, then we as a researcher, we should use uh, word forward. If we, for instance, in a, in a paper that I'm writing right now, I just do a simple split 66, 33%, with ordering data. So I take the first 66 of the releases as training and the last 33% as testing. I know that I've reserved the order of data and this is simple because there are other complicated things. And so in this way, I represent a usage where the user used the first uh, chunk of data, 66% as training and the last. So the answer, the, the short answer to your question is that uh, uh, we are not looking for the uh, for the perfect answer. I think uh, when we, as a researcher, when we choose the validation technique, we should uh, um, we should envision the way what we are evaluating will be used, and then we use a validation technique that match that user scenario. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So would you like to go back to the previous question yes. with the yes. more explanation? So Hank says you hold the last release for the Oracle validation. Then what is the training data for the Oracle validation? All releases, the last release. I think you yes, so. it is. The answer is yes. So it is all releases minus the last release, which is reported exactly in uh, figure two. Uh, if you read uh, the paper yeah. that is uh, available, if you are interested. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, okay, uh, are there any more questions? Uh, so I would like to continue, uh, if you don't mind. Uh, one of your conclusions also, um, if I am not, not mistaken, that uh, the reason that uh, time pres order preserving approach uh, somehow uh, outperforms uh, cross-validation um, is because the defect rates change over time in yes. projects. Yes. Uh, that's why if we, yeah. uh, you know, preserve yeah. the order, we somehow yeah. uh, learn it more accurately. Exactly. Uh, do, do you see this in both open source and industrial projects or yeah. were there differences? Yeah. And the point is that uh, we don't have to know if it increases or decreases. We don't have to know what kind of pattern is attached to the time. As long as there is something yes. that is attached yes. to the time or you think that there could be something, then we should use a time uh, series technique. Otherwise, mm -hmm. we somehow learn from the future things that uh, we should, we would not have been able to learn in the past somehow. Okay. Um... Okay, so we have 20 seconds left. Um, if there are any more questions, we can maybe take one very short one. Or uh, if you're interested in uh, discussing more, you can move to the discussion room. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for the good questions. <laughs> you're welcome. See you. Bye-bye.